Once upon a time, the sparks of creativity and the curiosities of different beings in the world found their way to the fairy realm of Tirnanog. One by one, they bonded together, coalescing into the form of a tiny winged being. Many moons passed, the seasons changed, and eventually the being opened their eyes, covered with the morning dews of spring. They fluttered the dew from their wings, looked around, and took in all of the incredible beauty before them. An overwhelming sense of curiosity filled the young Fae. They wanted to try everything, see everything. Still unsure of who or even what they were, the fairy took off and began exploring this new world. They traveled all over Tirnanog, meeting beings of all kinds. Grumpy leprechauns hard at work on their cobbling, playful selkies bobbing free through the waves, mischievous puka who took the forms of all the others to mock and play with them. The little fae learned from them and shared in their passions. Even so, they still were nameless unsure of what they were meant to be or do. So, their new friends gave them a name that perfectly encapsulated their creative and excitable nature. The little fae came to be known as Scylla Aria. Years passed, and Scylla found themselves exploring an all-new part of Tirnanog. They delved further into the forest, a place well known to be off-limits to the common fae. They came across a wreath of mist floating above a pool, and when they reached out to it, the space within the mist rippled into images of a world they had never seen before. With everything they had learned from their fellow Fae, Scylla understood that the beings before them were humans, and they were fascinating. Scylla learned about things of all kinds, cartoons, video games, gardening, cooking, anime, and some strange game called Dungeons and Dragons. Mortal beings did things so differently, and they were so ready to learn and explore. While every leprechaun worked hard on their shoes and held quick to their gold, and every Dulahan carefully carried their heads under their arms, no two humans could be said to be alike, a fact that appealed to the young Scylla, who realized that they had never seen another being like themselves. Scylla spent days watching them. They began trying everything that caught their attention singing for all creatures to hear, writing their own stories and songs, and learning to act. They became utterly enthralled when they found a little crafting form called dice making. Humans made their own dice for Dungeons and Dragons? <laughs> they had to try it too. Scylla snuck off to the Misty Mirror so often that eventually they were brought before Lord Oberon and Queen Titania. Scylla worried that they would be scolded or possibly even banished from their home. However... King Oberon, my queen, have I done something wrong? Aside from a few minor trespassing incidents, no. But that can be overlooked. We actually wanted to thank you for so diligently tending your duties. Duties? What duties? My dear, are you unaware of what you are? Yes. My lady. You, my dear, are what we refer to as a protector fairy, a rare being created to protect and foster a specific facet of the world. And judging by your actions, you are rather curious, aren't you? My dice! Indeed. Rather impressive, I must say. Scylla Aria, you are the fairy protector of creativity and curiosity of all beings. Just by following your instincts, you truly embodied your duties and purpose. We have discussed it, and we wish to give you the resources to continue. Take this. It will allow you to materialize yourself as an image in the mortal realm, or even visit if you so choose. Are you certain? Questioning a king, young one. No, my lord! Th thank you! Truly, I promise to make you both proud. And they did. Scylla worked day and night to construct a brand new treehouse equipped with books, a place to create new dice, and of course a place to make their favorite mortal beverage. Coffee. Black coffee. A strange little creature they were. 
However, not long after the construction of the treehouse was completed, Sheila paced their new home, trying to think of a new way to spread their creativity even further. Using their new magic from Oberon and Titania, the little Fae was graced with images that gave them exactly the answer they had been searching for. A little something the mortals called streaming. Since mortal electronics wouldn't work in the fairy realm, they would have to figure out a way to make everything themselves. The little fairy flitted off to ask their friends across the realm to assist them in creating all of what they would need. And so, as the Selkies brought parts and pieces lost to the sea, and the Pukas schemed and connived to get everything else, and the Leprechauns worked hard with Scylla to craft it all into shape. Then, after months of building and enchanting, with the blessing of their rulers and with help from their friends, the young Fae was ready to begin.